going on. So. Okay, so just for the recording, I've um, on Zoom, <laughs> Wendy and I have um, started this meditation Q and A, and instead of just starting it over again. Uh, we're just going to jump right in here uh, with all kinds of technical difficulties. I guess this is common for um, for the first time, I guess. Um, so the question we have coming in here is, will you ever feel like you're meditating right? I don't know. It's probably a bit like, can you ever feel like you're getting oh, a no. podcast right? Can you hear me? Okay. For some reason, it, there's an audio conflict um, when I do that. Um, so just give me one more second here. This I know this is frustrating. We try to launch this. Um, this I've is, got, this, this I've, is where our I've, meditation. Mm -hmm. I've got um, t I've got a headset, but I've also got a mic. I'm going to change. I'm going to unplug my mic and just go to the headset. Okay. Make it a bit easier. See if that makes a difference. Can you hear me? La 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 la. Yes, Let I me can. know. I okay. can. Great. The audio. Oops. The audio is a little bit um different, but it's okay. Um, what I'm going to do. Do you here... want me to? I can. I can go back to the other one. No. So we're meditating here. So this is this meditation. Is my... So the person who is asking about can you ever get it right to be meditator? Actually, I'm going to talk about being right how about that would sure. you rather be right or be happy let me just go here all right so since while josh is just doing that and hopefully the lady can hear me yes now we now, now she can hear so yes. okay great okay so you know like i had this this really clear understanding yesterday i was meditating and i was going yeah the whole issue is really that we think that when we are good we are right that we will be happy. It's a very conditional experience. So uh, what I would say is, if you want to be happy, you don't worry about being good or being right. Just kind of sit with kind of where you are in that's hard. Actually, now that I say that kind of it's hard, you've just got to recognize that it's going to, you're going to mess up. What do you reckon, Josh? Like there's no, there's no right way to meditate. It just means like here you are. I would say definitely, and especially starting off, this is what I tell my students and uh, folks meditating with me, is for a while they did have this kind of um, fear that, oh, I can't do this. You know, I just sit down, my mind's all over the place, and I'm like, you cannot mess it up. If you're doing it, especially starting off, you, you can't get it wrong. There's no way to fail. And so just that starting point where people are kind of conditioned that they have to go and compete things. And if they can't do it, if they can't um, meet their idea of it, then they give up right away because they don't want to be seen as a failure. So I just flip that around. You cannot screw it up no matter what you do or don't do, especially when starting out. OK, that is the starting point. And then it just builds more skillfully from there right so there's more wisdom and skill that starts from there but if you if you have this perception that i'm doing it wrong right out of the gate you'll never even get out of the gate yeah so i think it's really important to not be disheartened what's this person's name that i'm talking this is to? tea lady nat that is her insight timer uh handle Yes. Tea, tea lady nat very nice uh -huh. and as a big tea drink drinker i just want to say thank you very much for being a tea lady because it's like i live on that stuff so thank you very much um and i i want to add to what josh has said because often teachers just talk about this thing about don't worry about it but it's really hard we're really conditioned to thinking we've got to get it right so um, and then it's sort of not really helpful to just go, just bum on cushion and then that's just, that's good enough. But I want to say something a little bit more. So what I've really been looking at is that, so can, can Josh, so if you can just ask her, is it because, she, does she feel like she's doing it bad because her mind is wild? What is it that makes the, her think that she's not doing it right? Yes. And uh, T Lady Nat or Natalie, I'm, I'm sure you've heard. So what, again, to relay, 
what is the uh, what makes you think that you're not getting it right um, or that you'll never be able to get it right um, and she says I love that you said that you can't mess it up that gives me so much more confidence and freedom knowing that okay so I think she was doing that typing so the question for Natalie is you know what what makes you think that you'll never get it right or that you're not even getting it right right now so that's yeah, a okay. very key question okay so I want to add something to that so yeah. what I realized in in everything is that that wild mind so there is the conversational mind which is just thoughts and it's not that those thoughts are bad or wrong or anything like that uh, you know, there's that, I was actually speaking to my partner this morning, I think, therefore I am, but actually I am, therefore I think. <laughs> so it's kind of the other way around. So thoughts will just arise and they will do that thing because that's what thoughts do. But we're really hooked into that. And the reason we're hooked into, uh, we get pulled and swayed is because that's, I call it the ego part of the mind. So there's a lot of identification in that. And the ego arises because there's an emotion that sits underneath that, which is wanting to be known. So what I would say, there's a couple of ways to work with the really wild mind. And one of them is to try and come back to like, just go, oh, wow, I'm kind of off and I'm in the Bahamas or I'm in an argument or I'm reliving some hideous whatever it's thing or I'm suddenly having sex with my partner, whatever it is. <laughs> um just, you know, what commonly people will say, just come back to the breath. But I, I, I want to kind of say, try something, try something else um, and just explore and become curious. So when you find yourself getting, you're like off doing whatever it is that you're doing to just pause for a moment and simply ask, what is the emotion common to all these thoughts? And often what what I found is when I when I'm in that space is I'll go, ah, I feel ashamed or I feel desire or I feel seduced or I feel angry or something like that. And then by simply going, I feel ashamed. Yes, it's true. I feel ashamed or I feel angry. Yes, it's true. I feel angry or I feel hurt. Yes, it's true. I feel hurt or sad. Whatever it is, I feel joyful or I feel distracted. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. And or I feel confused <coughs> or I feel I'm failing like you're talking about failing. Um, then just to allow that emotion to be. And then it. And then that wild mind will actually slow down because what the wild mind is doing, it's like a, um, a child having a temper tantrum. It has a temper tantrum because it's seeking to have its need met. It's telling you something really important that it needs, but it doesn't have the vocabulary and the capacity to articulate that well. So the ego has no emotion. All it has is an image and a concept and a story. So by simply allowing the emotion that is kind of the fuel for that, it's going, I want you to feel this emotion. And if you get caught in the storyline, which is not a problem, but instead to focus on the emotion that's driving that, that will allow, it's like that then you kind of can feel the body drop and it opens out the space. And then what happens over time is, the emotional hijacking and the distractions become less intense and less pushed and pulled. And they allow, they just, it means you start to get a bit more space with that. So yeah. Tea Lady Nat, what do you say? Please give me some feedback about whether that's helpful. And then she also said about three minutes ago, how long, how long that I am doing it as in being still the other thoughts that I can't seem to get out of my head. And so this is a, a, the, the, the emotion thing is, and I'm not really sure I understand this exactly how long that I'm doing it as in being still, I guess, um, does that she, mean? She's asking, is, mm -hmm. is that, to, is she asking, you know, do I need to have a still mind? And, and then I, I want to ask, 
Do you think that's what that means? I think maybe. Or, or how long can, if she's judging it by how long she can sit still. Because she did join me in a, in a live sit. And, you know, since I'm a seasoned meditator and I can sit 45 minutes, no problem, really, without moving, then course it's natural sometimes for us to compare and judge like oh if i'm not sitting still for 45 minutes and formal mm -hmm. i'm doing it wrong and that's not the case obviously right so um and then, and, uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. you go you go oh, uh, can I, I just speak to that sure, can please. i just speak yes, to that yeah. so when i start so i want to tell you about uh venerable rabina Corton, who's very very ex she she's a tough cookie let me tell you she started because she just hated everybody and she ran out of people to be angry with <laughs> and so she just went oh well i got to do something about this i've run out of people to be angry and i'm still angry so i got to do something took her seven years to get the her bum on the cushion she was a she was a nun for seven years <laughs> before she could get bum on cushion so it's totally not a problem to be able to to, to not sit for a long time. Really, I've been thinking a lot about this lately and how difficult it is. So I, I learned sitting in a center. And I don't know about you, Josh, presumably you started sitting in a center. So, no, no, all by myself, oh, actually. Yes. Okay. So it was so, different. I'm a rare case, yeah. <laughs> okay. Most people start in a center and it's much easier because there's something about the group that holds you. I would definitely say get an app is another thing to do yes um it, it, that totally helps uh because that will help you that's kind of like having other people around you and when i started gosh i started and i was in a in a class in a group and my body just wanted to explode and i just i had to leave the sit in the room before everybody it was like 10 minutes before the end and i was like 15 minutes before the end i'd already been sitting for half an hour and my body was about to blow up and my mind was about to blow up i i left and then somebody came back and said you can do another 10 minutes and i you know like i i had a lot of support is all i want to say in that but it is difficult like run around like a mad chicken like for 30 40 years whatever and now sit still and be you know have a calm mind for 20 minutes like it's nuts you can't do it just start small start if you all you can do is five minutes if all you can do is one minute start there like just bum on cushion for one minute 60 seconds turn the phone on to airplane mode just try there and and do that for a week and then expand to two minutes and then i've got one client for four for four or five months she's been at four minutes she's like i cannot get beyond that so uh, it, we, it's a process for sure and this is the this is restlessness you're talking about right you're not talking about you were in pain or anything it was just sitting mm -hmm. just that momentum stopping that train right and then because it's been going and going and going so like people have to have constant stimulation, right? And it's not that, like to judge, it's just how we've been conditioned, right? And so when we t take that away, it's just like freaking out, not knowing what to do, right? And not knowing how to sit still or, or do anything because there's no, there's no reference point or no training. It's just, you have to do yeah. it. You have to just jump in the deep end, but it's not really the deep end because you can leave whenever, you know? It's not like you're taking a heavy psychedelic or you're being locked up or something, right? You know, if it gets too intense, you just get up. Yeah, just like when he was saying. So it, it is a training. And when I tell people a lot of times uh, with this hindrance of um, uh, restlessness is go and exercise. It's like this, a lot of this energy and uh, walking meditation I can uh, find helps too, or just regular walking, because if there's too much energy, walking balances the energy system and slows us down. If there's not enough energy, well then walking will get, uh, you know, summons energy and give energy too. And it's a, it's a nice balancer. Um, and, and I also wanna go back, I'm sure you have uh, some, or maybe you have some things to, to say about this too. Uh, then I'm going to go back to this emotion thing. I found that really helpful about uh, just really identifying the emotion and feeling it and acknowledging it and saying, yes, it's true. This is present. And how important that is for people like me that are more cerebral, how a lot of times I don't see the emotion. I have to actually kind of bring that to mind to identify it. And then they, they fuel each other. So the emotion can fuel the thoughts and the thoughts can fuel the emotion until they're kind of seen, acknowledged, and felt. And felt by 
okay, so that whatever we name as an emotion, where can we actually feel that in the body, right? So if it's anger, maybe my head is a little hot, or maybe there's a there's a tightness in my stomach. If if it's sadness, maybe I feel droopiness around my eyes, or I feel sleepy, you know. And sometimes sleepiness can feel like actually kind of pleasant and just kind of wanting to check out, right? But um, yes, so this is this is a common. These are common things, but the, the emotion thing I find is really helpful, especially for those oriented more around emotions than thoughts too. You know, I I have a very intellectual bent, so I I'm quite conceptual and. and oh yeah, you are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And by so, the way, for for anybody that wants an introduction for Wendy, because we just jumped in here, our time is limited. <laughs> please see our a previous show uh, that we've done uh, for Wendy's background and uh, to get a better idea of who Wendy is and what she does. So. I'll just, I will just say something. Um, so just to give people a bit of a heads up about who is this nutcase at the other end. <laughs> yeah, including so, me though too. I can, you know. So I just, I just want to say, I've got about 20 years of practice in a couple of different traditions, all in the Buddhist stuff. That And I started because I was basically so wound up like a clock and my psychotherapist said, you need to chill. So that was my starting point. I had heaps of trauma and m meditation is not the cure for everything. Thing. I'm definitely not a believer in that. It's just one part of the puzzle. Um, and I did a psychology degree four years. I did my honors thesis uh, on loving kindness meditation because I found that because I had so much anger, I was really, really angry. And I found love, the loving kindness meditations um, to be the most beneficial and um and i also have a psychotherapy training a somatic psychotherapy training so and i've been meditating for 20 years so just to give people a bit of a heads up yes okay oh, so and, is, yes. and one more thing this and is... i also have just and i've also just been i've got a diploma in meditation teacher training which i've just oh. finished oh. and i've got the next one starting which is um with tara brack and jack cornfield meditation oh. mindfulness uh teacher certification program so that starts next year two years so that's Very cool yes yeah, so we yeah. remember us talking about this previously yeah. so yes wendy has some cred to say the least here so yeah <laughs> uh so let's we'll see and then i i, I want to finish up tea lady nats here's comment and then i also since that you've had experience with uh trauma i want to uh get into how um, we ought to approach those with tra uh, trauma in meditation versus kind of, you know, I, not, I guess maybe to draw a distinction here, but I think it maybe might be an important distinction to, 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 to delineate here of those with uh, really severe trauma and how they might approach meditation di differently and how you coach them. But before we do that, the other thought, um, T Lady Nat says here, the other thoughts that I can't seem to get out of my head. So now this is a classic meditation question, right? If um, uh, basically saying thoughts are the enemy is what it kind of comes down to, right? And which is not the case at all. Thoughts aren't the enemy. Um, and it even goes so subtle that a lot of teachers that I hear that they're like, they say the same thing. And then they proceed to go on and on and on about how um, to kind of uh, do subterfuge. Why can't I pronounce this word now? Subterfuge? Uh, yes, with, with thoughts are just kind of like underhandingly saying that, um, oh, they're not a problem, but yes, they are. And here's how you deal with it without really, yeah. really saying they're. At, 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 so it's like this double edged sword, right? It's like this yeah. kind, almost hypocrisy in, in a way, maybe. But it, it's a really tricky thing. Well, I'll just put it that way. It, it's, a, it's a tricky, sticky situation. And I see so many different techniques in so many ways to approach this. But I want to hear Wendy Nash's uh, approach on thoughts in meditation. Oh, well, I think they're probably a bit like breathing. If I didn't breathe, I wouldn't be me. And if I didn't think, I wouldn't be me. And if I wouldn't exist. So I think that, it, you know, we can have, I think some, I think, you know, I, th I think what, Tea Lady Nat, and I like her name, Tea Lady. I'm just so, because I have a, I'm so partial to a cup of tea. Um, in fact, I have two tea plants out the back. So, um, I've got a cup on my it, table, by the way. So, <laughs> so, so I think is the issue that a thought arises, or is it that 
it hijacks. I think it's more there because actually if you, if, when you meditate, I want, I want T Lady Nat to try this. Next time you meditate, I want you to get to the end of the meditation and try and remember all the thoughts you had. So get, you're not allowed to use pen and paper. So just at the end of that, maybe five, 10 minutes, just sit down even for five minutes after this show and just go, I'm going to meditate and then try and remember every single thought, every one of those thoughts within five minutes or 10 minutes or one minute. And you'll see, they just go and they just, they dance. They're like fish in a tank, you know, or like the butcher birds at the back, which sweep me at the back and try and clip my ear. It's breeding season here. <laughs> oh, scary. So, and and actually, that's not not a bad analogy because the butcher, you know, we do get scared by the thoughts. So it's more that they are unsettling. And at that point, I want to just say, like, imagine that any images that you have or any experiences or emotions, they're like a little baby. Imagine you have a little puppy in your arms that's a little bit wild and ratty and you've got this little puppy and it's trying to squirm and it's trying to bite you and everything. You know, you want to handle it really gently. You don't want to whack it over the head, nor do you want to step on it, nor do you want to kind of ignore it. You know, it's a little puppy that's a kind of wild and isn't used to human handling so you want to be super tender and notice that it's that it's there and just um sort of look and observe what does it really want actually this little puppy dog what is it hungry is it cold is it tired so go from that perspective what do you think josh and what does tea lady nat think Yes, T Lady Nat, please chime in with uh, your thoughts and our response to, to these things. And I think that's wonderful advice, you know. Um, and it's, it's interesting for me because sometimes I have kind of the opposite dynamic where I kind of derive self worth and respect and honor from actually amping up some of the thoughts, uh, you know. And so I know it's, it's constantly reminding myself that, you know, this is not an intellectual exercise. This is meditation. Okay. So a lot of times I will start with this fat, the underlying emotion a lot of times is fascination with just phenomena and what's happening in meditation. And that's actually can be a very good thing. However, it can also spin off into things that have, you know, I could be, you know, um, who knows what the mind can be doing. And then I will just have no idea that I'm actually sitting there breathing. And I'm just off in this kind of like virtual reality, uh, planning and brainstorming and, you know, just, oh my God, this is so fascinating. This genius machine of the mind. And it's just like, I'm starting to worship this thing. And it's just like, okay, wh what the hell is going on here? Um, wait a second. Um, yeah. Seduction, you know, yes. seduction but comes yes. in many forms. And, I, you know, there's a whole thing about, oh, uh, you know, well, when I get really, so in Australia, we say some really up yourself, you know, like full of yourself conviction or something, you know, like, wow, well, I'm really the best. You know, big when up. you get really up, yeah. bigger, okay, whatever the American <laughs> yeah. term is. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, really up yourself, you know, this to kind of like cut yourself down. But I actually think it's better to go, wow look at the seduction and this is what the trance that we're in trance, and and, yeah. and really really sort of see the trance for what it is i really i think that is a very nice thing because then it stops being the enemy and it just is you know like my you know my foot is itchy or something it's just the mind is doing its thing and so it's a matter of um allowing it to be but not getting really uh hijacked i i one of my teachers he says you know when he's doing the planning thing or whatever he says is this useful right now because sometimes it's really useful to think through you've got something on your mind you know i used, i was at uni and i was um university college yes. and i was writing essays and so i would write essays in my mind and my partner he writes policy documents so he's often thinking about policy and how it's these texts and all that are coming together and sometimes there's really useful parts to that you know because he goes oh, I know what I'm going to say in that actually and and that's fine 
sometimes that's actually the best thing. So it's a good question to go, is this the best use of my time right now? I find that's a really helpful question. It is. And this even boils down more to priorities. Like, okay, what's important right now? Okay, am I... And, and then also to... Um, to give myself, allot myself other times of the day to give myself to whatever seems so pressing. You know what I'm saying? So if something really comes up that needs addressing, then I can, if, if it's possible to set aside other part of the day to address that and then say, okay, well, this is actually meditation time now. And then look at the kind of the, what we're prioritizing in meditation. Or, or is our, if we're doing an object, are we prioritizing that, that object? what you know what else is coming up and yes a lot of important things do come up that do need attention and then how do we kind of manage when we should give those attention and when we should not so this, yeah yep and and actually i realized i didn't answer the question about um trauma yes so what meditation is not a cure for trauma and ruminate like it took me a long time to realize that i was ruminating out of trauma because I thought if I just did more loving kindness for one particular person, I just did more loving kindness, more loving kindness, eventually it would shift a dynamic in the relationship. But actually all it did was keep me traumatized and in a really bad space. So there, I, it took me a long time to realize that these kind of really intense thoughts actually was trauma and it was rumination and that was so I've been meditating for 20 years and I've done all this training and it was last year that I went oh my goodness that's rumination that's how long it took me to realize so because I just kept and I still you know I still have these thoughts that arise and and it's like it's there's something about the locked nature of it that becomes problematic so when it feels like you're just saying exactly the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over in and it's quite violent in the mind I want to say and it's evoking shame and humiliation and guilt um, then it's it's worth going to a psychologist or a psychotherapist to work with that and the best tra- trauma treatment that I personally have found is EMDR that's the one and you can look up EMDR on the web on the website and then find a practitioner local to you that's definitely that very cool and so this that's a uh, a, a wonderful insight great insights um now I've heard things like um sometimes when um the trauma gets kind of brought up again, it can actually trigger the same kind of um, chemical response in the body. So like reliving it like this huge flood of uh, internal chemicals coming. And so um, I guess maybe the equivalent might be to um, someone who's never experienced this is like, it's like taking a really strong, heavy drug, uh, potentially. I mean, um, so I don't know where I'm get, getting with this is that, um, so, so some people talk about exposure therapy. So can't sometimes when some of these memories come up and get triggered, can that, it, I guess, what is helpful around that and what's not? I mean, do, because do, usually in, in regular uh, meditation, kind of, at least I know in my experience, let's just talk about my experience. I had, I just heard of this psychological term called splitting and it, it, uh, it, it, it puts everything to a T. So when I face a situation in life that I'm not really able to handle or I don't want to, then that splits off and it kind of goes into the unconscious or whatever. And then I just keep going about my way. And so when I was finally set down to have all this stuff catch up, (coughs) then this stuff started surfacing. These memories that I totally had, you know, um, didn't, didn't even realize were kind of below the surface coming up. And so I... You know, I, I tell people this uh, in meditation context uh, every once in a while that, you know, I wept a lot for the mm-hmm. first time. I was able to do that because I was uh, by myself, you know, so it was, it was socially appropriate. But it was it was really it was um, it wasn't necessarily re-traumatizing for me. And maybe in a way it was, but it was kind of like a release, a, a healing. Now, I can I can definitely understand, though, that if some of these traumatic memories get triggered in certain uh, situations, that they're so intense that they could possibly 
um, not be appropriate, right? So I, I guess I don't know. Um, like you're like you're saying, like a lot of it can't be um, done in meditation, right? So um, so I guess like if maybe the question here is, what happens if something does get re-triggered that's not ready to, to handle with? Um, how it, can it be addressed then? Or I don't know. Help me out here, Wendy. What uh, what what can else can be said about this? Um, so, so I think uh, I would say seek some kind of trauma therapy of some kind. Meditation is not the panacea. You know, there's a whole thing about it'll cure cancer in the morning and heart disease in the afternoon, you know. So it's supposed to cure everything. And it, it just, it's, it's just not, it's not good to do that. You can break the mind. I, I uh, was on retreat very early on and with for a month and, and a woman had a psychotic she had had some psychotic episodes and stuff and she went on a month long insight retreat high concentration and she flipped and she had to go into her sister had to come and collect her from, and put her in the psych ward you know she she was in a full psychotic episode so really trust your your kind of wisdom your inner knowledge that you are at an edge that is your mind is saying this is something you need to look at and meditation is maybe not like really listen to your inner voice. Um, I would also, one of those things that I find really, I have found really helpful is um, when I'm in that space, what am I not seeing about this? Um, and that that's a question often when I've got a big problem, what am I not seeing about this? That really helps me. Because something will emerge. Because it's like there's two parts of the mind. There's the ego mind, which is that very conversational one, which is just going rap, 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 rap. And then there's this other one, which is like more wise and discerning and, and clear. But you need to, in when your mind is kind of, when the conversational mind is like going on steroids, then you need to have, you need to invoke it because it's a softer, quieter, sort of more patient one. We're at one minute left, Josh. I know. And this is so great because we need wisdom and to, to meditate, to even begin with. And then it cultivates wisdom, too. The great thing, too, is you can just get up, right? You don't have to, like, stick with it. You can immediately come out of it. So thanks so much for everybody for joining. Never did hear uh, Tea Lady Nat for that, but I'm looking forward to her next one. I think it's uh, November 5th. No, 3rd. Is it sick? Oh, I have this written down. It's it's the November second, I think, at uh, two um, seven p.m. Central. Yeah, the we, second, we moved it. We yes, moved it. We did. Yeah. But we originally planned to do the end of the month, and well, thanks everybody so much for joining. Looking forward to doing uh, several more, if not many more, of these. All right, it's so great, Josh. Let's jump back on after the time has stopped. Sure. Okay. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye, Thank you. All awesome. right. Bye.